Hello students and parents, Mrs. Borngraber here. It is day three of our ELA lessons. To look at our topic and objective, it is to reread the story Two Bear Cubs on page 132 to 151 in your Journeys textbook and complete page 49 in your reader's notebook. I actually found a different version of our story that's not a play. I do want you to read the play but I'm going to read this other story to you as well to help with your understanding. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard to follow along with a play when one person is reading it, so I hope you were able to read it with some of your brothers and sisters or your mom or your grandmother, your abuela, your titi, um, because it's really going to help you, and it's actually a lot of fun. Um, after I read this story, I'm going to show you where you can look for a video of kids who actually all took parts of the play and performed it in their school. All right, so this is Brave Measuring Worm. This is the same story, the same myth that we read yesterday, but it's not in a play. And you can tell by looking at all of the words that this is a narrative. So it doesn't have dialogue for different people to read. It's just our typical fiction story. All right, here we go. Once long ago, Mother Grizzly Bear had two cubs she loved dearly. One day she went out to gather roots and berries. She took her cubs with her. The young bears ran here and there as they played. Their mother warned them, stay close to me. The brothers ran on ahead all the while, racing, wrestling, and playing hide and seek. They forgot their mother's warning and continued further and further down river. From a huge boulder beside the stream, they dived into the water with terrific splashes. Weary at last, they scrambled up on the big flat rock and lay down. As the warm sunshine dried them off, they fell asleep. As they dozed, the rock began to grow bigger and taller. For countless days and nights, it continued to grow. The whole time, the two cubs slept on peacefully. Hmm... Hope you guys remember from the play what's going to happen next. While the rock grew, Mother Grizzly searched for her missing cubs. In her wandering, the bear met gray fox, mother deer, mountain lion, and finally the little white-footed mouse. Have you seen my cubs? She asked each one in turn. No, they all said, but we will help you search for them. The searchers looked everywhere a cub might be. They searched in caves and in hollow logs. They looked in thickets and in the tops of trees. They found no trace. After days of searching, the creatures finally sat together to decide what they should do next. Suddenly, red-tailed hawk swooped down. He called to Mother Grizzly, I have seen your cubs. They are on the granite stone, which has become a towering mountain. He continued on his way. The bear and her friends hurried to the base of what was now a wall of rock. They called and called, but the cubs slept on. Then, one by one, beginning with Mother Grizzly herself, the animals tried to climb the mountain. They tried and tried, but even Mountain Lion, the best climber of all, failed. Is there no one who can save my cubs? asked poor Mother Grizzly. I will try, a small voice said. Looking down, the bear saw a little measuring worm. The Miwok call him Tukanoa, tu, tu, tokano, which means cur little curl stretch. He moves as a caterpillar moves. Most of the animals laughed at him. Even Mouse cried, foolish measuring worm, your name is longer than you are. But what happened when we read the play? He proved them wrong, didn't he? Mother Grizzly picked up the tiny worm and said, gratefully, I welcome your help. So Measuring Worm began to creep up the rock. He curled himself into an arch, anchored himself with his short back legs, and then stretched out his body until his front legs could grasp another bit of stone. As he went, he marked a safe path with a sticky thread. For Measuring Worm can make a silk like a spider. Once Measuring Worm looked down and saw that the mighty river now seemed only a thin band of silver. 
The forests and meadows looked no bigger than twigs and moss. He grew afraid and could not move at all. After a time, he found his courage again. He began to sing, to talk, to talk, which means curl stretch, curl stretch, as loudly as he could, and crept still higher up the granite wall. Finally, one morning, he reached the top of the vast stone. He whispered softly into the ear of the two cubs, Wake up! When the cubs saw how high up they were, they began to cry. Measuring word comforted them. Follow me, he said, for I have marked a safe p path with my thread. We are afraid we will fall, wailed the two little bears. Measuring worm challenged them. Are the sons of Mother Grizzly, the bravest of animals, such cowards? he asked. Then, to show to Takana how brave they were, the cubs started down on their own. Wait! cried the worm. You must lead me. You must let me lead. There are many dangerous places where great care must be taken. Just then, some loose gravel slipped out from under younger brother's paw. Older brother grabbed him and pulled him to safely. safety. Measuring worm moved carefully over the loose gravel. He insisted, you must let me go first. My thread will be our guide, but I must remember what, but I must remember what dangers lie in wait. This time the cubs heeded him. As soon as they made their slow, careful way down the rock wall, Measuring Worm pointed out other places where stones were loose or the edge of the path was crumbling. When they complained about sore paws and empty bellies, he promised them they would soon be safe with their mother again. Measuring Worm even stood his ground against bad-tempered rattlesnake who blocked their path. The snake shook his rattle and coiled himself back as if ready to strike. The cubs were afraid, but brave Measuring Worm, small as he was, spoke loudly. Snake, I have promised to return these cubs to Mother Grizzly. Let us buy, and the creatures of the valley will know that you are a friend. Rattlesnake, surprised by the bravery of the little worm, drew aside to let them pass. Measuring Worm thanked Rattlesnake and led the little bears on. They still had a long way to go, but the worst dangers were past. At last, the cubs and their rescuer reached the valley floor. Then how joyfully Mother Grizzly gathered her cubs to her heart and hugged them. Then all animals decided to call the rock Tutakanula, which means Measuring wor Worm Stone. This was in honor of the heroic worm who had not done, who had done, what no other creature could do. The towering stone kept this name for many years until newcomers renamed it El Capitan. Hmm? All right, friends, so there's a narrative version of our story that we read called Brave Measuring Worm. I just want to point out some other resources that you can use. Um, if you want to see how another school staged the play that we read, you can go onto YouTube and Google Two Bear Cubs Play. Ooh, there you go. Two Bear Cubs Play 2016 SAIS. This is a group of third graders play, um, performing the play that we read. You can also Google Bear Cubs, look at some videos of a mama bear and her babies. And then I want to talk about the task for today, which is to complete page 49 in your reader's notebook. All right, um, so go ahead, reread the story with your parents. You can go ahead and look up how some other schools staged the play. That might help you understand. So here we have like the older brother and the younger brother. And then look up some um, videos about bears. All right, I will see you for your next lesson and have a great weekend.